industry is still at the early stage. With games like BGMI. The um, position of esports fans differ. We see mobile esports as the future direction of travel. The esports and gaming uh, sector has acquired a lot of investments over the years, and uh, with events like the Gamers Aid, and we are seeing esports becoming a new creator's economy, right? So, how do you see this uh, ten years down the line? I think even though we've seen a lot of growth in the industry, but I do feel like the industry is still at the early stage to realizing its potential. Now we're seeing esports being played out in different continents and different regions of the world, um, with it with the local characteristics. Some some regions are more the PCs and consoles are more popular. Some regions are more mobile focused, and we've seen the the composition of esports fans differ across different regions. What we've seen in China, for example, is mobile gaming, mobile esports is prominent, and we've seen a large participation of female fans and female viewers as well. What we're hoping to see in the next ten years is something that would、um, Happen at a global scale, something that an esports title or several esports tournaments that would that would happen at a global level that would ignite and unite the esports viewers and fans across the world. You mentioned mobile gaming.、Uh, countries like India are really big on that, with games like BGMI. That's called PUBG is called BGMI in India. Games like that, Free Fire, occupying、uh, a major chunk of the creators' timeline. So. How do you see those games and mobile game gaming、uh, becoming a part of the esports culture? We see mobile esports as the future direction of travel for esports, because mobile gaming has made it a lot, make gaming itself, competitive gaming itself, a lot more accessible. We've seen that in China, we're seeing it in India, we're seeing it in Southeast Asia, and and we really see that as a way to break esports from just the niche sports that it was a couple decades ago. Um, into a mainstream sport that everybody can enjoy, because now that with the accessibility of playing mobile games, you can have that、uh, you can have that audience, a much wider population of people that can play the game, understand the game, and enjoy the esports of it. We made a big bet on mobile esports when we founded the SPO back in 2016, and that bet has definitely paid off. We've seen over the past、uh, eight years, Honor of Kings, a mobile title, has now become the the largest. Mobile esports title worldwide, and where I'm very hopeful for markets like India, where you have a large player base and then with a large mobile culture,、um, we're very much interested in what will happen in mobile esports in India. Do you feel as gaming and esports、uh, leave a lasting mark on the world? How do you see、uh, STEM degrees、uh, becoming popular? Because as far as game development goes, a lot of that involves STEM. Yeah, we had a conversation in our panel yesterday about the.、Um, The the economy of the gaming and esports space, right? If you think about it, it's there are a lot of different characters in this. There is the creator of games, meaning the developers, the publishers, and there will be the participants in the es- in the esports、uh, industry, so the producers and and the directors. And then you would also have all the related, like you mentioned before, like the creators that are centered around the space. I agree with you. That STEM is going to be very important because knowing how to create content, especially utilizing the different Uh, technology and different、uh, tools that we have on hand, especially now with generative AI,、um, that's a big push into how to lower the hurdle of entry when it comes to game creation. STEM is is very important, but I want to add to that. There are other things, other majors are also important. Things like、uh, storytelling, things on the more humanities side, because at the heart of it, esports is a connecting、um, experience. So at the heart of it, we want to see human story. We want to see the story of athletes, how they compete with each other, how they showcase their talent and skills, and then we want to see how we want to feel related to that content. So yes, STEM is important, but on top of that, there are a lot of other humanity majors that should be important as well. So talking about esports specifically, where do you think the major、uh, chunk of investment is coming for?、Uh, is the creator economy responsible for that investment? Or is the、uh, segment or the industry in general、uh, is on the verge of the tipping point?、Um, 
I think there has been a lot of investment in this industry from from different rationales, right? And then I think um, they all actually work towards a common direction of esports. Eventually, is going to become going to become the next generation of sports, and of esports eventually going to have the experiences provide to be able to provide the experiences on a global scale. And um, creator economy is actually what the creators are, are providing is actually a very important part of the ecosystem. Because part of our business, part of our core pillars of our business in China, in addition to tournament operations and commercialization, is uh, the creator economy, meaning that we're one of the largest gaming and esports influencer managers in China as well. So the way that we see it, people enjoy esports. People should enjoy esports as, as a way of life. So they should have the luxury of enjoying esports and gaming-related content, not just on game day, not just the super competitive, fierce competitions on stage, but the related contents as well. So there will be the, for example, short videos, the streaming, the reality shows, the, the other other contents created around the same thing as well. So I see creators being a very crucial part of this puzzle as well.